What knowledge might save your life one day? If you ever fall slash get pushed down from the platform onto the rails at a subway station, try to roll under the platform. Many stations have space there, like Little Overhang, for exactly that reason. Well my country sure want people to die that way. They've got space under there but have blocked it up with a big metal fence. Maybe to also get electrocuted? To make sure you'll die before the train hits you horribly. If you are ever bitten by a bat, raccoon, fox, or skunk go directly to the hospital. There is no cure for rabies once it is fully onset. Out of all history only 5 people survived rabies. Meredith Palmer being one of the 5, if you're a pedestrian and crossing the street, if you can see the sun's reflection on the windshield of a car, there's a good chance the driver cannot see you. If your shadow points toward the car, same. EMT here. If you're ever choking on food in a public venue do not go to the restroom to avoid causing a scene. Almost every death I've seen from people choking are found unconscious in a bathroom stall because they were too polite to seek help. I feel like if there's any situation in which it's okay to not be polite, it's when you're choking to death. If you ever use boiled linseed oil to treat wood, don't leave silk rags lying in the trash. They oxidize, and after a few hours can self-combust. If a rhino is running towards you, wait until the last second then sidestep out of the way. Rhinos cannot make sudden turns and will give you a couple seconds head start to run in the other direction. Repeat as necessary. Female heart attack symptoms are often different than those commonly described, and women commonly assume they are just fatigued, or have the flu and die as they do not seek medical treatment. Uncomfortable pressure, squeezing, fullness or pain in the center of your chest. It lasts more than a few minutes, or goes away and comes back. Pain or discomfort in one or both arms, the back, neck, jaw or stomach. Shortness of breath with or without chest discomfort. Other signs such as breaking out in a cold sweat, nausea or lightheadedness. As with men, women's most common heart attack symptom is chest pain or discomfort. But women are somewhat more likely than men to experience some of the other common symptoms, particularly shortness of breath, nausea slash vomiting and back or jaw pain. Women are more likely to lack chest pain, instead, they may experience shortness of breath, pressure or pain in the lower chest or upper abdomen, dizziness, lightheadedness or fainting, upper back pressure or extreme fatigue. If you are a woman you know is fatigued, out of breath has jaw pain and neck tension, feels nauseous, etc. They may be suffering a heart attack. Chest and left arm pain is not a universal symptom. Edit. Panic attack symptoms often mimic heart attack symptoms. If you have chronic incidents where it feels you are having a heart attack, especially if you are cleared by an EKG or a cardiologist, it is possible anxiety is the true source. In this case, Psychologists and psychiatrists are ideal for helping you identify, manage and overcome your symptoms as well as providing techniques to prevent future panic attacks. If you ever are kayaking and become pinned upside down, swim down deeper into the water to escape the kayak. You may not be able to flip it over. If you are first in line at an intersection, look both ways before going when the light turns green. You never know when someone is going to run a red light. If you fall into cold open water, resist the urge to swim and try to float until the onset of panic subsides. Once you have your breathing under control you can then start to swim to safety. By doing this you will not hyperventilate and avoid potentially drowning. To float, slowly lift your legs up, keep your arms out at surface and lean your head back. Yes you will get water in your ears, just let it be. If you're ever charged by a moose, get behind a tree. They have about a 10 inch blind spot and they'll lose you. That's what ski patrol would always say when there were an increase in moose sightings on the mountain. They'd tell you to stay out of the trees when skiing. Unless a moose is running at you, then find trees because unless you've got a steep hill or are already up to speed, the moose is probably faster than you'd think. When you go into a building look for an exit that is not the one you used to come in. In an emergency most people will head out their original exit, but you will head out of the exit less traveled, and it may make all the difference. If you have to get through a locked door, don't charge into it with your shoulder. 
Instead, kick it straight on next to the doorknob slash handle. This has a much better chance of breaking the lock. Edit, it's better to mule kick the door next to the lock instead of facing forward while you kick. It's safer for you and you can apply more slash better force that way. Never use bleach and ammonia based cleaning products at the same time slash in the same room. A combination of both their vapors creates chloramine vapor which can kill you if inhaled. Check your cleaning supplies to see what's in them, especially toilet and tile cleaners. This is also why you don't use bleach to clean up cat urine. Always leave your itinerary with someone. If you meet strangers, i.e., potential bad people, on the road, always let them know that you are in touch with friends and family and that they know exactly where you are. You become less attractive as a victim. Edit, always let strangers know that you have a destination and are expected at a particular time, too. This is really useful when traveling in areas where taxis, tuk-tuks will try to bring you somewhere better. Just tell them you're meeting a friend and they shut up. I've also heard that not only say a friend but make it more specific, like I'm meeting my sister or my mom is waiting for me at the restaurant. Friend can sound more generic but family members also imply that they will call someone if you don't show up as they are typically closer to you than a friend can be. Not saying this is true in all situations, but making up specifics will help more than generic statements. If your car is going underwater, an electronic roll-down button will work regardless of the water pressure outside the car, but a manual handle is much more difficult, you also won't be able to open the door. It's better to have something in the glove box, like an ice scraper, to break the glass with. Mythbusters did a whole thing on it. That episode saved a woman's life. She wrote to them to tell them and Adam Savage cried knowing he'd helped to save a life. Mythbusters saved my life or at least my house, I was a early teen and was cooking bacon, the pan caught fire but I had just watched the episode where they put water on a grease fire and it makes it way worse. If I hadn't have watched that episode I would have probably thrown water on it and it would have been no bueno. I saw that in Real Kids, Real Adventures on Discovery Kids, yeah, 90s kids here. It should be a mandatory lesson in every school. A few weeks ago he had this dude teaching us how to use a fire extinguisher at work. We all paid attention in the explanation, but as soon as he gave me the extinguisher and told me ok, put out the fire I panicked. It was just a screen and a simulated fire, but holy cow having the trigger in your finger is a whole different scenario. If you've been buried alive in a standard coffin, stay calm. If you are alive you haven't been buried that long. Also the dirt above you wasn't set yet. Most coffins are not built to last once buried and as a result have weak sighting. So here is what you do. Pull your shirt over your head. You don't want to be swallowing dirt. Position yourself so you are as sideways in the coffin as possible with hands and feet pushing on the long sides. Push. You should be able to blow out one of the walls. Start crawling up. Do not panic. You may not find a grip immediately. Keep going until you make it out. Worst. Nightmare. Just treating that made me uncomfortable. If you are in danger or in need of help, in a public place, it's almost always a bad idea to just yell help. It's more important to be specific. Pointing at someone and telling them to call 911 will be more effective. The bystander effect can be a real bitch sometimes. I tell my kids to break windows if someone is attacking them or the like. Yelling help may not get cops, breaking windows will. I'll gladly pay for windows to keep my kids safe. I can't replace my kids. On a related note for adults, if someone tries to get into a vehicle you're driving, like at a stoplight or a parking lot, punch the gas. Do not drive to wherever this person is telling you to go. Hit whatever is in front or behind you. Unless it's a person, don't hit a person, a car, a wall, what have you. Accidents draw people and thereby more witnesses. If you call 911, always say where the problem is first, followed by the problem. If you happen to get cut off before you can say what the problem is, at least the dispatcher has a location to send an officer to to check it out and advise if more police or fire is needed. Example. Operator, 911 where is your emergency? You, help I am being stabbed disconnect. 
versus operator 911 where is your emergency you 742 evergreen terrace help i am disconnect location 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 never mix bleach and glass slash window cleaner ammonia 120 people will get bowel cancer in their lifetime you need some sort of screening starting at age 45 to 50 depending on your family history. Any blood in the stool needs to be checked out. Early cancers can be completely cured with keyhole surgery. You don't have to die of bowel cancer. In Australia when you turn 50 the government starts sending you free testing kits every two years. When people say to take an aspirin to help during a heart attack, chew the pill, don't swallow it whole. It gets absorbed much quicker. When you're staying in a hotel, take the time to read the diagram on the back of the door showing where the emergency escape route is. Take your room key with you if you leave the room in an emergency as you might need to get back. Have your shoes on when the flight you're on is landing or taking off. Statistically that's when bad stuff happens and you don't want to be in bare feet for an evacuation. If someone is choking, ask them are you choking? Bear with me. If they can answer you, they're not choking. If they can't, you can go straight to the Heimlich maneuver. If you're accidentally poisoned with methanol, ethanol is an effective treatment as medical help isn't immediately available. Don't get the drinks from the same place that poisoned you in the first place. If someone is trying to abduct you, fight back. Most abductors will just give up if they meet resistance. And whatever you do, don't let them take you to another location. You ain't talking me to no secondary location. In Australia you can always make calls to OOO regardless of whether you have signal slash credit. Your mobile will use any available network to connect you. In the US, this is also true of 911. If you are able to connect to any cell tower or a Wi-Fi network from your phone, it doesn't matter if the phone even has a SIM, you're supposed to be able to contact 911. If you're alone and start choking with nobody around to give you the Heimlich, you can give yourself the Heimlich by using the back of a chair, or similar objects like the sidearm of a couch or whatever. Forcefully throw your stomach over the back of the chair a few times, try to mimic the motion of the Heimlich, push in above the belly button, then up. Kind of like a J motion. I always try to remember this but any time I think I'm slightly choked this logic goes out the window. How often are you choking? The last time this was asked I actually read something that later, at the very least, saved my ass. Don't try to put out a grease fire with water. You must smother IT. Keep a 360 of your surroundings as you drive, heck, period when you're out and about, but especially while driving. I was at a four-way stop. My red light turns green. I looked left before I moved. There's a dude going 60 in a 30. The dude behind me starts hiking and acting like F you what are you doing? The speedsters flashes by a moment or two into his fit, and I see him in my mirror act so apologetic, waving sorry and all that, thanking me cause he or I would have been fucked had I just not looked. If you have to get out of a moving car then put one foot down and take a step, don't just jump out. This will reduce your speed immensely, sure you will fall over but at a much reduced speed. A stunt man told me this. For more videos like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out our other videos and thanks for watching. Also don't forget to subscribe to PewDiePie.